Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good performance by our guys on Saturday. Uh, really happy and, and pleased and, and proud of, of the team and the staff. Came up with really good game plans and uh, um, things we talked about all week. We played with an edge. Um, we played with a chip on our shoulder. We came out fast. Things that I thought we needed to do, uh, we were able to do. And I think Baylor uh, is, is a good team. They're struggling right now, but I, I, their offense – uh, is a really difficult offense to defend, and defensively, I thought they had some really good players, uh, but uh, our, our guys jumped on them fast. Uh, a couple of you know, the play by Stuff and, and Dez getting the the sack and the fumble was huge. Um, the block punt was big, um, just to get us that early lead. But uh, really pleased with the way the guys came out and performed, and uh, to get that big win at home uh, and keep that perfect record at home was was important to the guys. Uh, now we've turned our attention, a uh, really good uh, KU team that uh, we've got to go to Lawrence on Saturday and had a good practice yesterday, and we'll get back to work today. How different is this Kansas defense? Um, you know, from last year to this year, I, they they keep improving each year, uh, being in the system, same stability on the on the defensive staff. Uh, a lot of returners that just know the system better and better. Uh, I think they're really good at a number of different positions, but collectively, I, I think they're they're just a really sound defense. They don't give up the explosive plays. Uh, they tackle really well. Uh, we're going to have to come up with a really good game plan to, uh, especially on the road with the, with the noise. There's some uncertainty about what quarterback they use, but overall, this offense, how difficult of a preparation is it with all their movement and different things? Yeah, uh, we'll find out on Saturday, I'm sure, uh, at the earliest of who, who's going to play quarterback, but they're really good and really creative on offense. Um, no matter who's going to be behind center, they're, they're always going to be creative with shifts and trades and motions and uh, misdirection, uh, as well as having the ability to give it to the two running backs and just pound it at you. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things that I see over the last few years is how much they've they've improved and grown on the offensive line. I think they're really good up front. I know the, I think we played against all those guys last year. Um, they've done a really nice job developing those guys, recruiting, and same thing with us. When their offensive line plays well, uh, they're really difficult to stop. When our offensive line plays well, we're difficult to stop. So, um, uh, but uh, no, it's a big challenge for us on defense. Well, with all the uh, the things that they do offensively. You mentioned those running backs. That, that's a pretty good one-two punch they have, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And uh, both guys uh, can run it. Both guys can catch the ball out of the backfield. Both guys can can get in the protection game. Um, you know, and and. We're going to see a handful of times where they're both on the field. You're going to see some wildcat. Um, once again, just more of the things that we have to try to prepare for. And it's probably, you know, I'm probably preaching to the choir on their end of it too because they've got a lot of offense. Uh, f uh, or excuse me, their defense has a lot of offense to, for, to try to defend, just like our defense has an awful lot of offense to defend. Both teams do so many things offensively, it makes the preparation really difficult. What's uh, what's the status update on Jake Clifton? Today? Yeah, Jake's going to be done for the year. I uh, hated to lose him, um, but uh, he'll be done for the year. And um, we'll go with Austin Romaine there at the Mike Backer. And uh, you guys saw last week we're able to use Rex Van Wy now. Uh, and I thought Rex played really well. Um, but uh, now he's in that four-game window. So uh, he'll be in there. Bo Palmer will be in there as well. Um, so we'll uh, go with who we have. Uh, Kelly Duke, he's not facing any other – Nope. Type of nope, he'll be ready to go. I um, <clears throat> also wanted to ask, uh, Cody Stuffelby, when we asked him the other day, um, when he moved from tight end to defensive end, he kind of humorously said that he just woke up one day and had a message from the coaching staff said, please report to uh, defensive end duty yep. today. Um, <laughs> what went to that decision to uh, move him over to the d defensive a side? A number of things. We were probably short there at defensive end, and it's been a couple of years now that that uh, has happened, and um, we probably – saw some things that tied in where we were playing a certain amount of guys. And so we moved him over there, knowing he's a bigger body tied in too. You know, some of the things that we're doing um, with our DNs is being five techniques, four techniques, being able to handle tackles and guards. Um, but um, he's done a really good job there. He's played more and more this year. 
Um, you know, he's probably in on a third of the snaps, if not more. He's helping us out on special teams. I think he starts on three special teams. Uh, and I'm happy for Cody. He's had a, a really productive season for us. Sure seems like you know this rivalry has become a little bit more meaningful in the last few seasons since um, Katie okay, started winning a little mm -hmm. bit more. Based on when you first had to play him in year one to now, how much more of a difficult matchup would you say this is? Oh, it's it's light years different, you know, um, and uh, it's even light years different from Lance's first year. Uh, and I can't remember the years are, are kind of spinning on me, but um, you know, because Lance didn't take the job until after spring ball or May or whenever the heck it was. Um, but um, to see what they've done in the last few years has been um, is really impressive. It doesn't surprise me because I, I know what kind of coach Lance is and I know what kind of staff he has because I'm friends with a lot of those guys. Um, and they're doing they're doing a heck of a job. And uh, I know that they're disappointed that that one got away last week, just like we were disappointed one got away the week before. But as we all know, in this league, man, anybody can beat anybody. We found that out this weekend. With the necessity of next guy up at Mike Linebacker, what kind of progress has Kirksey made throughout the season? Um, he's been injured, so he is not going to be in the mix. And Brendan Mott seems to have played with a lot of anonymity this year, but what's his play meant to your defense? Uh, he's a great player. He he plays things so well. He just, he's so instinctive. Um, he can play the run. He can rush the passer. Uh, he's smart. He can sniff out plays like he's done in the last few games of, of some trick plays and stuff. He just uh, playing at a really high level, and, and we're fortunate to be able to play as many defensive ends as we do and not have a drop off. What kind of progress has Purnell made since he shifted from safety and now he's playing at a high well, it's level? It's been two years, so I mean, it's he's made great progress. I mean, he's one of the best linebackers in the Big Twelve. Um, because he's worked at it and he's gotten stronger and he's gotten faster and he's um, learned how to play linebacker. Coach Standard has done a phenomenal job with him as far as getting him to understand the, the techniques and the nuances of playing backer. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without, without Dez and Austin. Those two guys are, I've told you guys from the first week, they're booking guys I think are all first team, all Big 12 backers. Considering. Uh, I know ball security is always important, but considering what has worked for KU on defense this year, or does it become a greater emphasis this week? Just ball security in general, guys. You can attribute the fact that we've won what four or five because we're plus ten in turnover margin. Period. You know, um, we were struggling early in the season. We were turning the ball over, and we weren't creating any turnovers. And I told you at one time, you hope when they start coming, they come in bunches. And in the last five games, we were talking about it as a team meeting, we're plus 10, and we've won four or five, I think. And that's a huge thing. When you're not giving the ball away and you're able to get some short fields for uh, the offense, um, you can generate momentum. And it's uh, something that Colin talks about every day or every Friday, every day to the offense, but on Fridays when we get together as a staff, what do we have to do to be successful tomorrow? Take care of the football. Coach Clammer, what do we have to do to be successful? We've got to get some takeaways. And, um, you know, it's between the last week, between the takeaways and the fourth down stops, you know, you're getting seven, eight extra possessions. What do you make of your special team's progress so far? Um, it's up and down. Uh, you know, we've made probably bigger splash plays in the last few weeks with the with the block punts. Uh uh, our kick coverage has been has been really good, and one of the big reasons we've been really good at kick coverage is because of what Toby's done. Um, Toby can take away a half of the field because he can got great speed and he's difficult to block. We need to be better in punt coverage, uh, and it starts everywhere. We need to be better at the line of scrimmage. We need to place the ball as uh, best we can, and I know that's – uh, sometimes easier said than done with the wind and the factor and because Jack, I think, is punting at a really good level. And then we've got to continue to keep the ball inside and in front, and we've got to tackle better. How how good is the, the, the tandem of running backs that the KU has? Um, you know, they, they can beat you in a lot of different facets. They're, they're both physical runners. Uh, they can hit, you, hit the home run on you and then catch the ball. So, um, you know, you can't just key on – one guy because both guys can do so much and I, I know the Neil kid obviously better because we recruited him but uh, 
uh, they're both really good players, and, and they're going to find ways to get them a football, that's for sure. And then with, with the little film that you have on Ballard, how, how, how does the pr- preparation work with not knowing and then having so little film on a yeah. one-up guy? Nothing can change for us. Um, and I know it was a smaller sample size, but I really didn't think they changed a whole lot offensively when he came in the game last week. Um and it's still what they do, and they're having a lot of success on offense um, with whomever played quarterback in my mind. And so whoever plays quarterback, I think those kids as a total offensively believe in what they're doing, so why would you change it um, because another guy's under center? You know, it's Are we going to change everything we do on defense because we lost Daniel Green? Nope. Are we going to change everything we do when we lost Savage last year, when we lost Sincere? And that's that's the thing that uh, I think Lance and I both believe in is you develop a program and you plug guys in that fit the system. And um, the expectation is high when those guys go in the game that uh, you don't have to make wholesale changes on things. You can keep doing what your game plan and what your program believes you're going to do both offensively and defensively. What's the challenge when it's a rivalry week like this? Obviously, you guys are so good about treating every game the same, treating all your preparation the same, but obviously around everything else is, is very different. For the Try players. not to listen to you guys. You know, um, some some of that is easier than, uh, than, it, than we talk about, but, uh, you know, for, we know how important the game is. We know... For our Kansas kids, we get so many of those guys that it's really important. Uh, they grew up around the rivalry. All those things don't have to be said, don't have to be talked about. Um, but it still comes down to you better not take any shortcuts. You better focus on your preparation of what we're going to do today uh, to give us an opportunity to be successful Saturday. If we have a bad day today, it's going to compound our issues and we're going to have a tougher day on Saturday. We just got to attack today. You know, it's hard to win in the Big 12, Coach. How difficult is it to win on the road in the Big 12? Um, it Well, it, it's proven to be tough for us. You know, right now we've we've played uh, well at times and, and not played well at times. And on the flip side, we've played really well at home. And uh, for us, we've got to bottle that up and take it on the road. And – uh, I know it's going to be really loud. I know it's going to be a really good environment. Uh, I think that makes it even more fun because of the amount of fans that will be there. I think K-State will sneak a few fans in there as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, sometimes we put too much emphasis on that, and um, then there are, then guys start to play tight, and well, that's the last thing I want. Um, our guys played really loose uh, at Texas Tech, and – for the most part, in the second half, our guys played loose uh, in in Austin, um, and that's what we need to try to replicate. So that, um, yeah, it's going to be electric environment. But our guys got to focus on their technique, their alignment, their assignment, and then play really hard and really fast. And switching gears, we're coming down the stretch here. Just what does Cooper Beebe meant to this team this year? Well, he didn't get the defensive tackle player of the game, and he was disappointed in that because he made two plays, uh, or he was in there for two straight plays. He, he said he made the one play. i got to go back and look at it. And then he said he knew it was going to be a pass on the second one. He watches this stuff, so I'm going to hear about it. Um, but he's been everything, uh, and that's an unselfish guy to say, yeah, I'll help you on defense. Um, you know, Whether it's going to be two plays or 15, we don't know. But he had to come over and help us, and – um, you know, that's an unselfish guy. He's played really well in the offensive line. I, I think he's the best offensive lineman in the conference and probably one of the top ones in the country just because that's what people tell me that scout and go to different uh, NFL guys that come from different uh, uh, organizations. But I see it every every week on film. I think he's one of the best offensive linemen in the Big 12. And, um, and then uh, from a defensive standpoint, he really has helped us when, when we lost Damian. We hope to have Damian back this week. Um, so maybe we won't need to use him, but we might want to because the kid's been really productive in there. How good has the offensive line been for you this year? Um, it's It's been good. Uh, I think Rouse would tell you we can continue to work on consistency. 
Um, and when I say consistency, that's not from game to game. It's play to play. You know, we got four four guys right uh, on 70 plays and, and one guy off on 10 plays. Riles is going to say we're not very consistent. It's tough because of we're seeing so many different fronts. We're seeing so many different uh, stunts. We're seeing so many different pressures um, that, uh, you know, it, you need an experienced group to be able to communicate all the things that they're seeing, uh, and then you've got to play with really good technique. And, and, and I think we've played really well in the offensive line, um, but there's still more in front of us. To follow up on some of that from D, um, having a guy like Cooper Beebe in your offensive line room setting the standard, does that just elevate, raise all the ships? It does, but I, I would say collectively having all those seniors in there uh, is what that has done to the younger guys that, that aren't playing, to the younger guys that are in the too deep, that this is what the expectation is, and this is how you prepare from watching film to probably more importantly as you get into mid-November taking care of your body because – you know, it's your body's beat up on, on in mid-November, but uh, if you get your rest, get your sleep, uh, get your hydration, eat right, get your recovery in, um, you can still be productive. And then just watching the way that those guys communicate. I see it at practice every day um, of, of what they're talking about in the communication as well as not only when they're up there, but when they're back and watching the twos of, you know, they're coaching those guys. And I think that's really important for Sam Hecht or Andrew Linegang to hear from Biebs about a technique or about uh, how the defense is playing it so that those guys can learn. When you arrived, you knew you needed better depth in the program. And now five years in, that depth's getting challenged a little mm -hmm. bit. Are you there? And can you ever be comfortable with your depth at 85 scholarships? Um, well, you, they're not changing the rules, so you better be comfortable with your 85. But no, we're always working on depth. Uh, in you always think like you have good depth, and, and I think we have good depth uh, in the wide receiver room. I think we have good depth uh, in the running backs. I think we have good depth at tight end, whatever you may say, uh, offensive line. You think you have good depth at linebacker until you lose a bunch of them. And now we're really thin there. But it's fun to see guys like Rex Van Wy and Bo Palmer uh, that are take all these practice reps learn from Daniel, learn from Austin, learn from Dez, and have to apply it on game day because uh, V.J. Payne did the same thing last year. V.J. Payne was really not in the mix for us other than special teams and stuff, and then all of a sudden we lost Kobe Savage and Sincere Mason in back-to-back -back weeks, and all of a sudden the depth became the starter. Uh, and so it's something that we emphasize every you – know, like, like today, we'll do a young guys period – uh, or inexperienced guys, period, where, where we'll just go K-State versus K-State because uh, if we're continuing to work our base calls and our base techniques, those kids are going to get better when they have that opportunity. they got to be able to answer the call. One more depth question. We saw defenses start adapting to Ben Sennett being on the field. The emergence of the other young tight ends yeah. being involved in the passing game, has that helped out everything? It's helped out a bunch, and seeing Garrett Oakley healthy has really helped us. Um, Oaks made some big time plays in the past game. Uh, Swanee's playing well, uh, so and and then we threw Christian Moore in and had, had his first uh, touchdown catch. So no, we've got uh, we've got good depth there and and uh, we've got some playmakers at tight end. What is the younger part of that tight end room look? The guys that are <laughs> freshman or sophomore this year? Um, they're on scout team and they're learning. And, um, you know, they're, they're probably not having that opportunity because they're not ready yet. But uh, uh, Coach LePac does a good job with those guys. Those guys give a great look. they got to go against our linebackers and DNs every day, and they're continuing to improve. I know you're, you're focused on, on your couple you know, of games remaining, but have you ever seen uh, Big 12 races – jumbled and confusing as this one i haven't paid that much attention to it i know the standings because you know they're they're in front and center of you all the time but I, no i i don't pay that much attention other than the fact that i i know that uh um we got really good parity in this league and, and there's not a game where we played where i thought we're really going to get after this team and they don't have a chance and 
Um, and I, I hope we do the same thing when we play people. Of you better, You're going to get K-State's best, just like you're going to get Texas Tech's best and Baylor and so on and so forth. Um, it, it's uh, a lot of great parity in this league. You'll take contributions from guys no matter where they're from, mm -hmm. but this year you've gotten a lot of really big plays from in-state players, especially in a week like this. How meaningful is that? Um, it's important to those kids because they've watched this game growing up, and they've uh, probably been to the game at both stadiums growing up. And, um, you know, it, it's fun. I don't know. we got 50-some guys from Kansas uh, on the roster, so I know how important it is. And – for those guys to have any value, whether it's um, Chris Tennant and Jack that are uh, integral parts of the special teams, um, to to Des Purnell that's playing every snap on defense. Um, I mean, it's really important to those guys. And then it becomes important to the guys that are out of state to make sure I play my tail off for those guys that are in state. 